right, we are back. Vlog 8. Uh, last episode or vlog, whatever, we spoke about recovery and I got some good feedback off that. I got um, a few people saying that they enjoy that and it's good or they just enjoy the videos in general, not necessarily that um, one in general, but they're enjoying the these things. So that kind of gives me a little bit of motivation to continue these and and I haven't been as frequent as I would have liked, but um, it is what it is. But I, I'm still kind of enjoying them. It kind of allows me to delve deeper into a few ideas, like I guess with a few Instagram posts, you, um, you, you discuss 15, 20 seconds of, of a topic and then write a little blurb, and, but never really go go deep and elaborate on things so i guess that's that's a, a good thing for me to understand and a, and a good thing um or a positive thing for me to understand a beneficial thing for me to understand and actually elaborate it and actually have a think about it and articulate it and um go through it more more thoroughly so um today we're gonna go over running i've been running um I suck at running, or did kind of suck at running. I'm not too bad. I'm going to toot my own horn and go, not too bad. I'm not the quickest, but um, developing more, uh, I guess, resilient, uh, a more resilient body. Like my body was is not pulling up too sore, um, and it's getting into a bit of a flow. So um, my body and, and ligaments and all that, tendons and joints are getting um, used to this. So enjoying that so we'll talk about running we're going to talk about planes of motion so um, moving forward back left right and, and turning and what that looks like from a whole body perspective and then um, timing speed and coordination um, and how you can utilize that in a performance in a, i guess athletic performance point of view and how you can use timing speed and coordination from a movement point of view, or not necessarily a, an athletic point of view, but an everyday kind of movement. So the running, uh, I can't remember exactly when, and I'll go over this briefly because this is not that important, um, but it, it might be useful for someone who is wanting to get back into it. And and for me, I'm a, I'm a bit of an intuitive trainer. Um, and I, I kind of go through waves, do stuff that I do enjoy. I'm like not perfectly in tune with my body, but I, I do understand when I can give it, give it some juice and when to pull back a little bit. Um, and, and, and then saying that I know, um, if niggles pop up, what I need to kind of do more of or the preparation I need. So my first run, um, before I go into that, I, I had this idea of how I'm going to do all these things, how I'm going to prep is I'm going to just fill up my three buckets and my three buckets are going to be three different running days, um, and within a, within a week. And so far, I haven't actually even filled up all three buckets yet. I haven't gone for three, one, three runs in a week. But what I've done is <clears throat> the bucket um, will be a running session and I can fill up that bucket either through distance or through time. So whether I do a half an hour run or a five kilometer run, um, that's how I kind of fill up my, my bucket through there. So um, for me, originally it was it was time, but now that I'm slowing down significant, uh, it was, no, I think it was originally distance. Distance, but now that I'm slowing slowing down, that in now it's kind of both time and distance. So, um, and that way I just fill up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And if I plateau, um, I add in another, I use another bucket. So if uh, I did two hours of running over the weekend, two hours and 10 minutes, um, and I probably can't repeat that. So I'm, and then uh, three or four days later, I just went for a 15 or 20 minute run. So um, that way I can fill up that bucket each more. So 
um, all together. That, that water is uh, two and a half hours of, of water, two and a half hours of running. So I've filled up those buckets. Um, and if I wanted to do it like three buckets, an hour, an hour, an hour, but um, we'll see how that goes um, time-wise. So my run's in August, so hopefully I can go through there um, and, and smash it. I think it's more so gonna be the prep, um, obviously, um, but the day prep. So um, I won't go into too much detail, but I need calories. I burn through them so quickly. It's crazy. My blood sugar drops quite hard. So I need to make sure I'm eating uh, lollies or whatever just to boost me up, boost morale, etc., etc. So we're on track. Um, eight, just over 18 Ks over the weekend, two hours and 10 minutes, not the quickest time, but um, we're, t- we're, we're going through gradients, my mate and I, what a goat, um, for running along with me. But um, yeah, I might try a straight line and see how that feels. Um, and just go up up a big road and then um, just over 10 k's up then just over 10 k's back and we'll see here we go all right and that's all there is for running I'm no running guru um, I'm training a runner at the moment and that's quite fun um, and yeah super super fun um, and he's also going for a, 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 a similar distance. So um, I'm not sure if it's a trail run or not. But anyways, I think so, actually. It is a trail run. Shout out to Rubes, <laughs> Mad Dog. <clears throat> All right, so plane of motion. Um, so planes of motion. So <clears throat> there are three planes of motion in the human body. And we're going to talk um, about how it influences our movements. So three movements. So we've got sagittal which will be forward and back um so think of if we're thinking spine um let's go uh extension flexion through there so i'm moving in this sagittal plane through here and then lateral and then if we're going left and left and right this is going to be in our frontal plane uh so like a lateral flexion lateral extension uh through here or just lateral flexion whatever And then we've got uh, transverse, so which is turning through here. And I think, I think, I think, I think that, you know, as we kind of go up the line, there's more, there's more popular um, planes of motion than than others. Um, If we're walking, everything's in a rotational movement, but we'll we'll discuss that in a little bit. but a lot of people are uh, doing this sagittal thing. So um, a lot of bench press, which is just straight back and forth, and a lot of squatting, which is straight up and down. I'm like almost moving, even though it's up and down, we're not moving. We're definitely not moving left and right, and we're definitely not not rotating if, if you're lifting super heavy. Um, and yeah, it's more so back and forth, um, and we're not so much yet moving in that, in that frontal plane, but um the what things uh i guess the that's the most probably popular one um and you'll get a lot of people or some people doing um, a lot of transverse work um so a lot of rotating people not so much working their frontal plane that's the other that's the the kind of forgotten movement um i guess and you'll be surprised how many people cannot uh flex their spine and go through this way so it's super important to possess all three but we'll talk about how rotation kind of influence the whole body so if we look at it from a let's go like a gait perspective so how we move through the uh through the world how we how we walk etc um if you we can pull up like a little uh, if you just google image gait then you'll be you'll be able to see that there's different positions um and how we move in terms of like heel strike, mid stance, and then um, max propulsion or, or toe off, uh, sorry, and then toe off or stuff like that. Anyways, um, if that foot is moving the way we'd like it to move, even though we're moving in a straight line, we're 
performing a rotational strategy to do so. So um, heel strike, a little bit of pronation, as that shin's coming forward, and that shin just doesn't shoot forward this way, it's gonna rotate and internally rotate our tibia and flatten our foot as we go into turn off and then a little bit of external rotation at the tibia again. And then moving upstream, um, it's gonna do a opposite thing. So as we internally rotate the tibia, where that, that uh... So although that all these movements exist, this, this sagittal, frontal, and transverse plane, a lot of how we move through the world is rotation is to the transverse plane so if we're looking at from a gait perspective and if you google image gait you'll be able to see different um, if this is our foot you'll be able to see different uh, positions of, of, of stance so early stance mid stance late stance if this is our foot as it goes through here um, and that you'll actually get some rotation and some articulation hopefully through that foot as we go through. So like some external rotation, some internal rotation, and some external rotation as we go through. So rotating, transverse, and that's gonna happen all upstream as well. So we kind of get a, a similar effect all the way through. So all the different joints are, are doing their piece to, to keep or maintain this center of mass as we're, as we're walking through the world. So. Um, that's super important to have the ability to, to rotate if, if uh, and you would, may have seen one of my Instagram posts that um, the, the, the hips and the spine moving and how that influences the knee and you can see the internal rotation there and you get some people with super stiff feet or stup, super stiff hips who can't move their foot or they can't move their hip <clears throat> and they might not be getting hip or foot pain, but they might be experiencing some, some knee discomfort because it just isn't uh, articulating or it can't, it can't bend. Um, there's no tibial uh, internal rotation through there because there's, no, there's, no, there's a bit of a block um, up and downstream. So that's a good place to start when we're, we're dealing with knees, looking at, looking at the foot, looking at the hip through there. So, um, yeah, that it's, it's very, uh, I guess, fascinating stuff how it's just, again, everything's meant to kind of rotate. And it, again, even though we're, we've got these different planes of motion, <clears throat> predominantly everything uh, is, is rotation. So even when we walk, we're, we're um, rotating our, our shoulders, our, our spine, our, our rib cage, our... Um, shoulder blades while keeping our head straight so we're actually turning we're not actually moving like this not everything's in a block we're actually getting some rotation at the cervical spine as well if if we're if we're running and even if we're you know catching a ball or kicking and we're always trying to keep our our, our um, eye line through here we're trying to catch and move and through this way so everything's rotation that's a little bit more um, in detail, but um, super important to rotate. And I, and, and I guess in terms of like kind of unlocking a bit of movement potential or bringing awareness to the body, I think it, it is super important to implement a few of those things. And like, I think the more that you explore movement, the more feedback you get. So if I was just, to, I guess, uh, a super popular, um, I wouldn't say even super popular, a movement is like a, a, a standing cross connect where stand up on your feet or you're standing and you bring your elbow to your knee like almost similar to a march and you can kind of get that feedback. You can kind of figure out where you're tight or where you're blocked or, or where needs a little bit of work and just by moving it differently, in a new space, you'll get that feedback, and and I and I uh, tussle with this this idea that you know m movements are a big expression, and the more you can express, then the more feedback you get, and the more opportunity there is to grow. But I I, I think that that doesn't happen for a lot of people due to the fact that people aren't self aware in their body, and they they might feel a little blocker but they don't pay it much attention they just keep on moving with their with their 
with their life or with their way and they don't kind of address it so I don't know something something to explore um, <clears throat> but I like the idea of, of pushing limits in terms of not pushing limits but um, exploring in a in a more challenging aspect so um, whether it be jumping and, and moving the torso or um, exchanging like with plyo lunges or something like that and being able to distinguish where a strong position is when uh, a, a weaker position is um, and again just bringing awareness to the body which I think is super powerful and I think the more awareness that you have the more like I said the more ability you have to to grow and work on those weaknesses and actually experience those things as well and I, I, for a lot of people like uh, sometimes you, you might give them like a um, a jumping exercise so let's let's call it like plyo lunges and they go wow I really like that one because oh, and they won't, oh, they won't say because but they'll they'll I think I, I'm pretty sure that they, I really like that one I think it's just going well wow. it kind of instills a lot of confidence um, in their body go I, I didn't know I could do that I didn't know I <clears throat> possess those qualities of having that mobility or having that um, coordination or, or strength and, I, and that's such a morale boost for a lot of people um, particularly those who don't usually put themselves in that situation or have never experienced uh, exercises like that but I think that stuff's super important um, just you know exploring exploring movement um, and movement is is not i think <clears throat> the movement realm or people view movement coaching or uh, whatever like indian clubs and constantly moving around or like rolling and not even touching a weight and doing nunchucks and all that kind of stuff um it's it's not really that it can be um but i think just movement in terms of just like exploring and like keeping a healthy mind health, healthy body and kind of keeping in tune with your body and having this this uh developing a connection between which again it sounds a little bit cheesy but it's true mind and body and, and bringing self-awareness and understanding your capabilities i think that's super important i think that's a, what a lot of people um, are missing uh, and uh, then they don't quite understand the the capabilities that their body has and I think from there um, becomes uh, maybe creates fear um, or an illusion of I'm weak or I'm this uh, I'm this age I had this injury and and they have this idea in their head that that's them now so their awareness of their body um, it's almost like a, I guess a negative thing, but I don't know. That's another bloody rabbit hole to, to go down. Um, a super powerful rabbit hole. But um, other than that, that's about it. Um, if you're watching this and, and this uh, thing cuts out randomly, there's a technical difficulty. So yeah, we, I'll just chop that up. Anyways, um, hope this kind of makes sense. It sounds like I was a little bit of a, a ramble. Um, as I was saying that, I don't think I said too many arms. Usually, I'm thinking about my words, and I want. I'm, I'm. That's a big thing I'm working on is trying to articulate things quite uh, effectively without overthinking. I'm pretty cautious with my words. I'll. I'll never say this definitely is or um, or yeah. I'm pretty cautious with my with my words, particularly when I'm coaching because. Um, they can be misconstrued, misconstrued, <clears throat> um, and may, sometimes taken out of context. So, I'm trying to uh, be more aware of how I speak, and I think I am getting better at this. I am developing a little bit more confidence in how I speak, com probably compared to the first one, which is probably a thousand more arms than this one. So, it's good. I can't wait till vlog fifty where there's barely any. Arms and I'm just rolling through so if you're watching this I really appreciate it I hope this makes sense if you have any questions uh, slide into the DMs and I will um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions so awesome thank you so much
Peace.